Welcome in, community. Welcome in. We're back. Without any consideration, we're back to Church Without Judgment. And um, we're going to finish that Bible study we were doing on the other station on, on the Church Without Judgment. This is the Mark Connor prophetic voice. I got a little tea here and God is doing amazing things. And I was just told uh, you must finish that book. Well, always got to complete something. If you're a runner, you want to finish the race. Uh, you want to practice what you preach um, and be accountable to God first and then man. Uh, God is working on our character and he is working on our integrity. Uh, our character is who you are when no one's watching. And then it'll build into a kingdom of God integrity. Integrity is who you stand for. What are your beliefs, your passions, your principles? What are your non-negotiables? That's your integrity. Your integrity is who you are. You can't get away from you. And we must look in the mirror. Yeah, I'm back. I want to go over uh, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, where we've gone to, we've done 24 and then it got, we got busy doing a lot of other things. But the component today is that um, being a minister, I must complete what I started. The book of Proverbs, I'm going to give you a little short synoptics or a little backdrop. It's the book of wisdom, one of the titles, or uh, the proverb comparison or the book of instruction. Do you want godly instruction or do you want man's instruction? We were working on this for 24 chapters. We're going to pick it back up. The author uh, written and collected by Solomon with the possible exception of the last two chapters, 30 and 31. The date around 950 BC. Uh, key phrase, fear of the Lord. The message, godliness is, is intently practical. The end result of wisdom are vastly superior to the evil end of folly, which we're seeing in this world we're in. Christ seen, Christ is seen as the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 1, 24 and verse 30, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians 2, 3. Note especially the sections where wisdom is personified and speaks. 1, 20, 33, and then chapter 8, 1 through 36. So Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And Solomon was the wisest man that was ever recorded in the past and the present. I want to take us to Proverbs 25. If you got a Bible, get your Bible. Um, these are God's words. If you believe this book from the book of Genesis to Revelation, this book is the inspired word of God. He, he said he breathed on it. God breathed on it. And even in the book of John in the New Testament, Jesus, it says Jesus is the word and he was the word. And then it became flesh. So Jesus is God in the flesh. He came down. He really did. He was with the father before Abraham was born. They're co-heirs. The father and the son are one. Amen. I want to get, well, let's look at this right now. Proverbs 25. These also are the Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of a king is unsearchable. We're talking about a king right now. Take away the dross from the silver and it will go to the silversmith for jury. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of a king. I want to stop here on these first six because it's talking about a king. You got King David is a king. You got King Solomon that proceeded after David. Then you talk and then he's talking about Hezekiah. That he was a king of Judah. Three kings. How did they get their kingship? It had to come from God. 
Hezekiah got 15 more years of life after an announcement that he was going to die. God changed his mind and gave him 15 more years. Write these first six verses. He wants to check the heart. It's a heart matter. And then God says, even as the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of the king is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne will be established in righteousness. Six, do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king. I talked about three different kings. Let's talk about the head king. The Godhead is the Lord and God. He's telling us to not exalt ourselves. Exalting yourself is pride. Arrogance, pride, being puffy, being being not wanting to compromise. God says, if you exalt yourself, you will be humble. But then as a scripture, if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. So God's economy or his kingdom is different than ours. We worldly people were puffed up, prideful, bullies. But God says, don't exalt yourself. Wait, and then I will we'll raise you up. I'm going to go to seven. For it is better that he say to you, come up here. This is a continuum that you should be be put lower in the presence of the prince whom your eyes have seen. Do not go hastily to court for what will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame. All this right now is relational. God wants to fix. He wants to heal relationships by forgiveness and to actually Forgive and to use agape love, that's a principle, but it's a heart condition. You got to want to forgive. Debate your case with your neighbor and do not disclose the secret to, to another. Lest you who hears it expose your shame and your reputation be ruined. A word filthy spoken is like apples and of gold and setting of silver. He's talking about a word a filthy spoken is like apples of apples of gold in setting of silver, like an earring of gold in an ornament of fine gold is a wide rebuker to an obedient ear. Like the cold of snow in time of harvest is a faithful messenger of those who sends him, for he refreshes the soul of his of his master. Whoever falsely boasts of, of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. By long for Barons, a ruler is persuaded and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. Seven through 15, we're talking still about relationship. It's talking about being faithful. It's talking about being not faithless. It's talking about being faithful to someone. And in that faithfulness, there are manifestations, there are godly principles you're, you're, you're keeping secrets. Someone may want to talk in confidentiality and you're not being a tell bearer. You're also minding your business. It talks about uh, even in a court of law, you get the Bible and they ask you to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. But then we will do that and then we will be lying. We And God also says that our righteousness is like filthy rags. We all at times lie and do things to cover for a purpose that happens. But, but the key to it is, is seeing that error and then saying, I don't, I, I gotta, I gotta do better. Can we do better? But then it talks about in 15, I'm going to 14. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain or, or promoting what you're doing. A lot of times we will want to give and, and, and we want people to see what we're doing. So we're going to show ourselves helping people. No, God says, do it in secret and then I'll secretly bless you. But then I'll publicly show it. He will show you off when you secretly do things. Amen. And then by long forbearance, a ruler is persuaded and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. Either we're going to be gentle or rude. In the New Testament, there's the fruits of the spirit, kindness, gentleness, self-control, uh -huh, love, apathy. There's the fruits of the spirit, kindness, gentleness, meekness, compassion, mercy, grace, truth. And a gentle tongue breaks a bone and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. 
Amen. I want to move further. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. It's talking about self-control. God wants us to have self-control so that we can help others. But if I'm out of alignment, I'm going, it's going to seep out of my heart, out of my mind, from my spirit, and it's going to be contagious. We're either going to be contagious in love or contagious in hate. Have you found honey? It talks about eat only as much as you need. There are people starving all over the world. They're messing with the food and, and, and we must work on self-control and compassion. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house, lest you become wary of you and hate you. God is calling us not to be busybodies and do the things with your hands, labor and take care of yours and pay attention to what you're doing and stay out of other people's garden because it may turn into a Sodom and Gomorrah for you because if you're in the garden of an Eden, that's your environment. But if you get nosy and step, you're going to step out of God's will. So don't set foot in the neighbor's house unless you become wary of you and hate you. you. Do you want someone to hate you? Mind your business and be honest. A man who, who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in trouble in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. Real confidence comes from God and it will last and you will be shining and you will get up after seven times of being beat up because God will get you up by grace. Confidence of this world is fake and we smile and we entertain. We entertain fakeness because it's fake confidence because when the wind blows, we fall apart. God wants us to be confident in him only. Amen. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather and like vinegar on soda is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. I'm going to read this again. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather. Lord, that's, that sounds like the cabal. And like vinegar on soda is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If you have a heavy heart, turn to God right now and, and tell him, I need help. If you're looking for a man or a woman to help you, they're doing it. Everybody is seeking their own right now because it's 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 that time because we all want to be secure. But what are you secure in if there's no foundation? The foundation is the Lord. Everything is blowing away right now. There's storms on top of storms. And the prophet is telling you there's a bunch of suddenlies that have been happening and there's more suddenlies coming. And then they're coming so fast. If you don't seek him now, he may not come for you. I don't want us to be like that. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. This is part of the, the two commandments. I'm not talking about the 10. The old is the 10. There's two in the new. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and strength and mind and love your neighbor as thyself. Give him some water for so you will heat coals of fire on his head. Someone will be mad at you. Don't be like them. Bless them. Rise above the evil and don't curse them. Bless them. God will take away all your enemies. He will take away your problems if you watch him. Let's not be like Mary. Mary, no, let's, excuse me, excuse me, let's not be like Martha. Mary was sitting at his feet. Martha was worrying and she was a busybody telling Jesus what he should be doing. He says, I'm not going to take this away from Mary. She's listening to my words, Martha. You should too. You're a busybody. Let's get away from being busy and let's get at Jesus' feet because we're going to need him right now. It, 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 not tomorrow, right now. He's a right now, Jesus. We need him right now. We, there's things that are here and current. There's things that you need deposited. Man can't do it. They're going to tell you, no, you're denied. We need the Christ. Amen. He says in 23, the north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and angry continents. A backbiting tongue comes from a place of 
emptiness from the backbiter. It says the north wind brings forth rain. So there's there's some rain and then the backbiting tongue. This is a person that is angry and they have to inflict that outwardly from their heart and their spirit onto another. And it is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a continuous woman. This is someone that is angry and they are picking and they are choosing to inflict what is on them because they are upset. 25, as cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man, this is a righteous man, not an evil man. He is a man that sins, but he has forgiven. A righteous man is a sinner, but he's saved by grace. I want y'all to understand that. We're all sinners, but he says, I want you to come to lead you to repentance. I, I, I don't like the sin. I love you. But he tells us to all come to his repentance so that we can have a saving. So there is a there is a supernatural thing that will happen when we humble ourselves. That was in the beginning of 25. He says it's cold water to a weary soul. So it's good news. The good news is the gospel. The full gospel is Jesus. A righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring in a polluted well. Why drink water out of the sink? It's just like a gentleman that goes back to his vomit. He is he is dealing with someone that has bad continuous news and they are they are envious of anybody that has the light and they come with negativity and there are darts coming at you and you're being judged by them. I'm going to go to 20. Seven. It is not good to eat much honey, so to seek one's own glory is not glory. I'm going to read it again. It's not good to eat much honey because some others need it, but you're so focused on what you got. So to seek one's own glory is not glory. 28. Whoever has no rule over his spirit, his own spirit, is like a city broken down without walls. Proverbs 25, 28. Whoever, this is whoever, where we have eight billion about on earth right now, it's probably less because we are being driven and we are we are perishing daily because of the lack of knowledge, it says in the word. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit, this is the spirit. This is why he says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord in the book of Zechariah. It proves whoever has no rule over his own spirit. I got to get this together. Let's get this together. Together is like a city broken down without any walls. This is why the world economy and this is why the world's socialization. This is why the world's mental health is broken because there's no walls. It's because we chose the world. We chose in Sodom and Gomorrah. Over the kingdom of God, I can prove it. Abraham told Lot and his wife, the whole family, they were the only righteous to go to the city, not to city, go to the hills. They were in Sodom and Gomorrah. This city was big. God told them there's going to be destruction. Go. But he said this word and I'm going to close. Go to the hills where you will have salvation and don't look back. Lot's wife looked back because she had a specialty in her pocket. The, the specialty was her heart was not connected to her family. Her heart was connected to the city. And we don't know what she was doing, but she wasn't doing what they were doing. And she turned back and she turned into a fragment of salt. She turned into ice. You know why? Because her heart was cold. It talks about it in Matthew 24. This is why our city walls are broken down. It's different from Joshua 
The walls went down because they took everything, but they praised God and then they took everything and the walls came down. These walls come down because we have no rule over our spirit. Father God, right now, I ask that you help us. Deliver us, Lord, and rule over us, Lord, but you don't rule over us like man. Father, you rule over us with comfort and protection and manifold wisdom and kindness and gentleness and self-control. You give us agape love and compassion. You give us mercy. You give us apathy. You forgive us over and over. And the Bible says, forgive them 70 times, you said. But Lord, I thank you that you are springing up forth the ability to get out of the grip of the lion. We're out of the lion's den and we will and we have already delivered us and we slayed Goliath by the spirit. Father, Father, help us. Help us be kind. Father, help me be gentle. Help me, Lord, not to be hardened by the world. Help me not, help us not to be a Martha, a busybody and a mess. Father, we ask we could be like Mary and John, the one that you love. They came so close to you. The most important thing was being at your feet because that's where we can be changed. The only thing that can change us is the spirit of God. And we love you, Lord. Shabbat Shalom from the church without judgment. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty and justice for all. We will do 26. We will broadcast that soon. We love you. Put a comment in there. But I want to tell you, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls from the church without judgment. Prophet Mark, we love you in Jesus name by his blood, by his perfect blood.